Hello, everybody. Good morning. So today we have something incredibly special for you. We are at Schooly Palooza 2020, and we just wanted to show you how big this really is. Today we're going to show you 10 unique ideas for building your bus or tiny space that you can do to really make something yours, something that stands out from everyone else. I mean, when it comes to building a bus, it's kind of hard to have a million different layouts I and mean, you're only allotted so much space. So it's really fascinating to come across people who use their ingenuitive ideas to make something that's super unique that not everybody else has. And so today we're going to show that to you and give you some ideas. So in case if you were looking to build a bus or a shuttle or whatever it may be, you might have some ideas of some things that you could do to build yours and make it especially unique just for you. Let's get started. We are uh, eight people, three dogs and a snake on a bus. My name's Matt. Um, and uh, as, a, as a large family, we needed a large table, so um, we came up with this uh, solution. Um, check it out. So we have our, our main couches here. Um, we have a bunch of storage and things underneath both of these. Um, this works as our living room, our classroom, our dining room, our craft room, everything that the family needs to do. And uh, for table solution, what we came up with is a folding option so i just extend these legs out a little bit and then the whole thing folds up and this other side does the exact same thing and then we can just kind of get in on the ends here and uh eat or play games or whatever there's plenty of room for everybody and um you know it's it's a good all-around solution for a big family Hey guys, I'm Kat and this is my bus Stu. Um, so our custom idea for our door latches, we got these awesome um, boat hook or what it, dock cleats. <laughs> I can't even remember the name. We got these dock cleats on Amazon and then we were trying to think of a way to keep these closed when we're driving. We thought originally of doing like a rope that you would tie around like a dock cleat, but that was way too much work. So we just went with these little pieces of elastic and then they're just tied back here in knots and then you can tuck them away if you want to or secure your things while you're driving. Hi everyone, we're Someday the Bus and we have our drawbridge deck. Doesn't really have a name, but that's what we call it. So we wanted a little bit more space because it is a shorter bus, about 30 feet. So um, we kind of came up with this solution so we weren't having a uh, deck that hung off the back um, and potentially could bottom out. So this stays up the entire time while we're driving. It has a bike rack back here that holds up to four bikes. Um, and then everything on this deck is actually remote controlled with this. Um, can hold about a thousand people, which we're a family of four. So thousand pounds? Thousand, thousand pounds. <laughs> so that can hold about a thousand pounds. Um, we're a family of four, so it works great for us. Hi, my name is Tony. Uh, this is the Great Gilly bus, and this is our uh, Gothic inspired castle door that. We knew that we wanted a side door, we wanted to have two doors in the bus. 
uh, primarily because we wanted to be a way to be able to walk through and also to get that air draft, which is amazing. Um, so about this door, I drew a door in a design that was a rectangle. And then my wife came in and she drew a design that was an arch. And I thought, oh yeah, of course that's better. How much harder could it be? And it turns out it's really complicated, um, especially if you've never built a door before, which I'd never built a door before, especially on a bus. So a few things about building a door. Um, build the frame first. Don't just cut a hole freehand, which is what I did, because then your arch, which for the looks of it looks very symmetrical, in the details of it is not really at all. Uh, this is the third version of this door. The first two doors were welded metal uh, with a frame, and then the first one was sheet aluminum, and then the second one was sheet metal. And we had a problem with them actually <clears throat> perfectly fitting because the bus, although it looks very flat, it looks very straight, looks are so deceiving. So this is actually two slabs of spruce that we picked up at some point and they sat next to the bus for like a year and a half. And then I took a router sled to find the depth. And so this is about an inch and a half and they're really lightweight, which I like. Um, we had to weld in, uh, this is just angle iron that's welded in. And then that arch is actually a full custom welded piece inch by inch. Um, I don't really know how to explain to do it, but it just took a really long time and you're shaving and you're angling, whatever. Uh, Cause you have to have a back jam so that it actually seals. Um, there's a little bit of a lip here that I've built. And then there's some real uh, very basic weather stripping that was pretty much just for our drive. We're not really finished with it yet. And we still want to do like, sort of uh, this kind of, you know, hammered kind of iron um, design on the outside as well. And obviously we need steps, but we thought we might build some stairs and we couldn't really decide on what we would do. So then we had another idea, which was instead of having just stairs, we go ahead and put a slide here, uh, which is really nice, really fancy. The kids love it quite a bit. So uh, anyway, those are the doors. Uh, my other advice, if anybody wanted to do something like this, obviously build a jam first on the ground, flat ground, find flat ground. Flat things are so important when you build. Um, find flat ground and build an outside jam and then build your doors inside of that and then put the hinges on and then while it's on the ground, open it and close it and open it and close it again, like 20 times. Um, doing it this way by yourself, hanging doors is very time consuming. So learn from my mistake. Um, but these are the great Gilly Castle doors. There you have it. Hey guys. <laughs> So I guess um, I'm the house of doors because I have some pretty sweet doors, but the first door that people always talk about, this gets us a lot of attention, is our front door. We once had someone said, oh, I know you guys must be good people because of your front door, which is really sweet. <laughs> but since this was our full-time home, I wanted a front door for my home. So. This is actually a mobile home exterior door. So the hinges are hidden. You can't just take it off the hinge. It's double paned plexi. So it's made to be an exterior home. So the security, we also have the deadbolt. Um, it feels really, really good to know that we're just secure. Um, also, it makes the bus way more energy efficient. It's not as drafty as the traditional side bus doors. So that's why we love it. Okay, so then in the closet, we have these really beautiful frosted glass doors with the trees on it. Um, this was a really fun touch for me because I didn't want these closet doors to be wasted space. Oftentimes it kind of takes away from the energy of a place. So I thought this would be a really fun, creative opportunity to do this. So there's both here. And then our bathroom door, we went with a barn style door but I wanted to give it some character and I wanted to create some contrast in the bus. So I decided to paint it black, which 
the contractor was like, no, you can't do that. Yes, I can. So I just spray painted it black, which I think gives it a lot more character and gives the space some definition. So. Okay, so here in the bedroom, we have our headboard doors, which are also the frosted glass, which we love. These came from 84 Lumber Sign Shop. They can actually put anything on any material if you guys want to make your space a little more creative with some custom doors. Um, so we created this logo, Lucky Bus. Um, and again, I think it's just a really nice way to make the space more creative and feel like home. I'm Isaac, this is the Woolly Mammoth and we are DIY Schoolie. And this is the bed lift. The idea was to make a lift for the bed so we could store large pieces of gear underneath it. And it makes a terrible sound when you're doing it, but it's very practical, so. So it can go up higher. This is a, a breaking hand crank. So wherever you stop it, that's where it stays. And then we just have a pulley that goes to an, a whole array of pulleys under there that go to every corner. And as you tighten it up, the whole bed lifts together as one thing. Uh, and then you can store amps and gear or whatever else down under there. Hey, I'm Chad with Braggard Wood Bus. Um, we build our, we have four kids, so we built these bunks like this, like a lot of people do. Um, one thing we really wanted to do is have really good storage for them. Um, and we built them, so there are these gas springs, lifts up, and we built them out of two by eights. And they got plenty of storage for all their stuff under there. Stick it down and go to bed. So I'm Chris, this bus is Zeppelin 2, uh, my YouTube channel is Off Grid Schoolie. Uh, I built this deck with my friend Wes, he was actually the archetype, his bus is over there, Transcend Existence. Uh, what we did with this deck is basically uh, build a frame over here on the side, it actually has a knuckle pivot to where you're able to adjust to the side of the bus, so this is just a bolt. This is into the H channel, and then we're able to get the direct angle vertical for the base of the deck. And then come over here, you can see these thumb screws, they come off and then the deck actually folds down because my bus without the deck up is 12 foot nine inches. Obviously 13 six is where you have to be under, this is way over, so it actually folds down upon itself and then I'm able to travel. Whenever I get to a spot, I'm just able to open the emergency hack hatch. I have an extension ladder, which comes up, which gives access to the roof. And I wanted that to be inside and want somebody random to be able to come up here to the top of my bus, uh, be able to get in. These emergency exits are made for if there's a wreck, somebody from the outside can just open them easily, get the kids out, whoever's in the bus. Uh, so yeah, this is my roof deck. After a long day, I'll bring a cigar and some scotch, hang out up here and just watch the sunsets. I'm Elizabeth, this is the Deliberate Life Bus, and we have some curtains that seem to be pretty popular. So we designed these curtains to kind of fulfill all of our bus curtain needs. We wanted them to give us privacy while also having airflow, but also having like a nice, like clean, smooth look. So when they're, they have a lot of functions. <laughs> when they're closed, they cover two windows and they're really smooth with just helps in a small space make it look less cluttered and cleaner. Um, like you saw, we had the option to roll it all the way up. We can fold it part way up and hook it in these little leather straps. And that just gives us a little bit of light. Uh, sometimes we do that when there's a lot of, when it's really hot outside, we'll close it down so we don't get too much sun. Um, but one of our favorite things it does is we have, we just drilled holes in a piece of wood and for the size of the dowel that we stuck in the wall. We can bring it down to the second level, which allows us to have both privacy and airflow, which is super important when it's hot and you don't have air conditioning.
My name's Jerry and my wife's Vanessa. And we have the bus called Catalina and our Instagram channel is everything after Z bus life. And we have this couch here that we found on the internet. Uh, it's a couch bed. It's ver very simple to operate. You just uh, pull on the back and you flip it over and it's a twin size bed. If they have it in queen and king, we went with the, the twin just because of space, but it's, it's real simple. It's actually a mattress that um, they use. So it's very comfortable. And we just, uh, we've had it for about two months and we love it. And we did a price comparison on if we were gonna make our own. And this was actually a cheaper way and it was easier. So Where did you get it at? Uh, couchbed.com. And they do have discounts for certain organizations. And if you're a veteran, uh, they give you a nice discount. Hi, I'm Marissa. This is Ma. Uh, she's my dream bus. And she's covered in these vinyl sticker tiles. Um, I placed each one myself. Each one is its own little square here. And I decided to do the sticker route because it it weighs much less than the actual tiles, and most people actually think they're they're real tiles. And yeah, it took about three days to get each one of these on here with my measuring stick and everything. And yeah, I really wanted to do something different, something colorful and unique, something I thought I'd never seen before. I didn't think anybody else had done it before. So. Yeah, these have been on here for about a year and a half and they've held up awesome through all the weather we've been through. Alright, so we got a bonus one for you. So this one is going to be number 11. But this uniqueness is not so much in the bus build part, but it kind of is. Right, we kind of right. built the bus for it, but this uniqueness is a little different in the case of how how they travel and what they travel with. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Wes and let him explain sort of where why he's a little more unique. <laughs> so Wes, yes. what makes you more unique than others? I think everyone's definitely unique in their own ways for sure. But uh, I, I guess for us this time around, um, yeah, a lot of you guys know me as just being the single guy kind of traveling in a bus it's a little different this time i haven't done an update video like i thought i would <laughs> <laughs> so you're hearing it on on his channel before me uh, on my own but uh yeah we i've, I've got a girlfriend and um traveling with her seven-year-old daughter we also have two cats two goats and a parrot <laughs> and uh yeah so basically there's a lot of people or you know that think they can't do things just because things are holding them back or they feel like they got one foot nailed to the floor and they're just spinning circles because of whatever it is is tying them down you know and really if you just have the passion to do something like this you just get out and make it happen you draw that line in the sand and you just step over it and, and just keep moving forward from that point always um and once you start doing that and really realizing that you can uh actually live this kind of lifestyle um it, it really frees the anxiety and stresses of normal society and this is an alternative way to live that's been so fantastic for so many people. You get out in nature all the time. It's very healing. Um, I don't know, I, I love it. So yeah, if you're, if you're thinking about it, just draw that line, stand a step over that line and just start moving forward for sure. Just do it. <laughs>